Well, hello, YouTubers. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about multi-threading and parallel computing, just a little intro to it. And uh, just so I don't waste your time, I want to show you the final product to start with to see it's something that you're interested in is spending some time learning how to do. So this is going to be the final product. And what I have here is an application that will be responsive uh, during uh, a task and um, will also make use of all cores to process some data. And then we have some cool things as the progress bar that will keep track of the progress and also some information on the running tasks. Um, you can, uh, one way to queue data in here is just to keep clicking on the uh, uh, get some data in here. And then as you see, um, I have some tasks that get queued up. And at the same time, the tasks are getting completed as well. Uh, on the right side, you have the task manager in here. And you can see that the .NET framework is actually making use of all eight cores that I have on my i7. Uh, they're not, you know, they're four cores and some of them are uh, virtual, I think. I think that's it. Um, and then you have the progress. You have the progress bar that keeps updating as I add new tasks. So you can see that the progress bar is smart enough to know that new tasks came in. So then the max gets, you know, goes down and then the tasks get completed. Uh, the task bar gets closer and closer to, to the end of it. And um, that's what I want to show you how to accomplish today. Um, uh, so if you find this interesting, just stay tuned and uh, just keep watching. Okay. All right. So you made through the little intro. I'm glad you stuck around. I think we're actually going to have some fun um, with this application. Let me show you what I have so far. And I have this already here just for the sake of time. This is a Windows form application. I have, of course, a form, and then I have a list box, a progress bar, a label, and then a button. Um, inside the click event of that button, I have just three lines of code. One is declaring a variable. The other one is calling this function called getData. And then when the data is returned from this function, I, I insert that data into that list box at the very top, okay? The get data function really doesn't matter in here. Uh, what I'm trying to simulate is some long running task. It could be a call to a database. It could be a call to a web service, something that takes some time to respond. Um, I'll show you what I have. And all I'm doing here is uh, creating some variables and then um, looping uh, over and over and over and the reason why I use a loop instead of putting the thread sleep is because I actually want the CPU to do some work. That's why in the demo you saw the CPU getting used all the way to the very top. Um, I could have just simply put the CPU uh, that thread sleep, but then I wouldn't. You wouldn't see the CPU being used. So this is just again just to simulate a long running task. And the application right now clearly is not threaded at this point. So let me show you what the application looks like at this point. Uh, the progress bar is not implemented, even though it's present here. Uh, nothing's going to happen to the progress bar, and the running tasks, this label, is not going to get updated at this point. So when I click Get Some Data, the button one click it gets called, and then the three lines of code get executed. The problem with this is that when I click it and I try to move the form around, you can see that it didn't move until that... Um, that it, the, until that task got completed. So, um, and also if I click several times, let me click three times really quick, one, two, three, you can see that I can't move and I'm not getting updates as, um, I'm, I'm not giving the user information about what's happening with the application. The application at this point kind of just freezes for the user. It's very busy in the back, but for the user it just freezes and then boom, dumps all the data back. And so we're going to try to fix this. We're going to fix this uh, this problem at this point by using uh, tasks. And what tasks are um, are you can think of tasks as units of work. And what a task does, it actually forks the application into a separate thread. So then the UI is free to provide information to the user as the second thread is busy, uh, second or third or fourth thread is busy doing work that the user requested. Um, so let's go ahead and introduce a task. It's as simple as 
using the task um, library. Let me go ahead and import the, uh, um, the namespace. And I'm going to create a new task, T. It says new task. And then right now I have to use something called a Lambda expression. And a Lambda expression is um, a Lambda expression is it's a nameless it's like a nameless parameter, um, no, a nameless uh, function. So imagine so you know how I have get data in here and it takes it takes no it takes no parameters. Uh, that will be the Lambda expression that we're going to create. So instead of doing like some some method, right? And then you can put the body of the method in here, like this, right? That would be that would be a method, right? I'm actually that's actually pretty good, pretty good way to look at it. So this is a method, right? Some method takes no parameters, and then you have the body of the method. The lambda expression is just a little bit different. You don't put a name to it. You put the parenthesis, and then in here, instead of putting the brackets, you're going to put a like a goes to. And then we're going to close with the parenthesis and a semicolon. That's our task right there. Um, but uh, you still need another line of code here. So we declare the task, but the system is not going. Uh, the system is not going to execute that task at, a, uh, uh, at the same time. You actually have to tell it to actually start. So you have to call t start, and then that would actually start this. It would start these three lines of code in a separate in a separate thread, uh, forked from the main thread. Um, now, there is a problem here, and I'm going to show you what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start. And you see that we're going to get an exception here. So I'm going to click Get Some Data. I can actually move the UI around at that point. Did you see I could actually move it around as it was trying to accomplish because it actually forked that into a separate uh, thread. But the problem here is that that second thread that was executing the calculation try to update the list box with you know we try to insert that data into the list box but that list box in this is in a separate thread is on the UI thread and so um, we got this invalid operation exception it says it's called a cross thread operation not valid you cannot you cannot access data across threads you have to merge it back so uh, let's go ahead and see how we do that in order to be able to update update objects that are on the UI thread, we actually have to separate this a little bit. And one way to do this is I'm going to move this string data here to let me go ahead and stop the application. I'm going to have I'm going to move this string data outside that task, and I'm also going to move this outside the task. Okay. And go ahead and then do this. And then what I'm going to do here is create a, a second task. Okay, I'm going to call this T2. But I'm not going to new up a new task. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to start a completely new separate task. I'm going to say that this task number two is going to be a continuation of the first task. Okay, continue with the first task. And then I'm also going to use a lambda expression. But this time, this lambda expression would actually take a parameter. Okay. So then the parameter, the parameter in here will be, you can name your parameter whatever you want, but I'm just going to call previous task. Okay. And then I'm going to do goes to, and then the body of the task in here. Okay. Just like we did it on the first one. Um, the difference here is that now I have a second parameter to this continue with function. Okay, hope you're following me here. So this is a function. The first parameter is this whole thing here. Okay, this is the first parameter. And then the second parameter is this. Uh, I deleted something here by mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and put a comment here. I'm going to call it task scheduler dot from current synchronization context and now I'm going to close this there you go it's suggesting that I use a limit expression I'm not just I'm just going to leave it like this okay 
So what happened here? What happened here is that now I have two tasks, and then this initial task is forks the program into a second thread, does the processing, and then it merges back into the second thread, and the second thread is running on the current synchron it's on the current context, which is the UI context. That's one way to get back into the UI context. And so now we have the data to update the UI thread. And then we call the start task. So if we click start here and we do get some data, you can see that I can move it around. Okay. And as I move it around, data actually showed up on the list box. Okay. So now our application is already much more um, much more responsive. I'm going to click like three times, one, two, three. And then as I move the, the application around, you can see that tasks are being processed and executed. Let me click a few more times. And as I'm clicking, things are going to get processed and I can keep adding more to it, okay? As, as data is being processed at the same time, okay? As I'm adding tasks, the tasks are being processed and then I can move it around already. So our application is much more responsive already. And not only, uh, not only does the task uh, create new, um, new threads, but since I have a multi-core system, um, the system is smart enough to actually uh, assign those threads into multiple, into different cores. So now I have the application running in parallel. Okay, so not only it's multi-threaded, but it's actually parallel. As you can see, it's using multiple cores to process all that information. This is this is it to create. This is it to create a uh, multi-threaded application um, and be able to pass information back to the system. There's a lot more to the task. I mean, you can you can actually use tasks that return data instead of using a variable like that. Um, but uh, let me also go ahead and show you uh, how to update the progress bar. And this is actually, and then you can give more, you can give more information to the user.